close your eyes and feel the breath. Try to inhabit the body and think of the breath inhabiting the body. Pull yourself out of that, the world of the mind, the world outside, the world of the eyes and the ears. Be in the world of the body. Try to get settled in right here. This is your anchor in the present moment, so you can watch what's going on. After all, what you're doing right now is shaping the raw material that's coming in from the past. And you want to shape it well. It's like being a cook. You open the refrigerator and it turns out, well, sometimes they're good things, sometimes they're bad things. You're not the purchasing agent. You were the purchasing agent in the past, but you didn't realize that's what you're doing. Now, you've, now you're stuck with what you, what you bought. Sometimes it's stuff from a long time ago. And the question is, what kind of food are you going to make out of it? A good cook can take anything and make good food out of it. A bad cook can take even the best ingredients and really ruin them. So the important thing is the skills you're bringing to the present moment. This is why you need mindfulness, alertness, ardency. And all the tricks you've learned in the course of meditating to get the mind to settle down and to be at ease with the breath, be at ease in the present moment, and to be clear about what you're doing. That's what mindfulness is for. It's not that we approach every moment as a new, fresh moment. There's something new about each moment, but there's also a pattern going on. If it weren't for the pattern, the lessons we learned from the past wouldn't mean anything. But they do mean something. They do apply. This is why the Buddha teaches. His categorical teachings, because they're true all the time. Skillful qualities should always be developed, unskillful qualities should always be abandoned. The path should always be developed. Craving should always be abandoned. These are things that are true across the board. And so we're going to be able to apply them skillfully to the particulars of right here, right now. That's what the all the little ins and outs of your past experience and the ins and outs of the teachings of the Guru Bhajans come down to is taking those large principles and applying them to all the little details that the mind can come up with, because it can come up with all kinds of things. We have a very fertile creative mind when it comes to greed, aversion, and delusion. You have to learn how to teach it how to be fertile and creative when you think about being mindful, being alert, being ardent in the path. And that way you don't lose out to the defilements. And at the same time, you look at what you've got in the refrigerator, you look at what you've got in the pantry, and you're trying to figure out what's the best food you can make out of what you've got. The more skills you bring to this, the better. So think of the meditation as a process of acquiring skills. You're learning lessons every time. You can learn lessons from a good meditation. You can learn lessons from a bad meditation. We get the mind still so it can have all these things at its fingertips. That way you don't have to complain about what you're eating, because what you're eating is based on what you've made. To develop as many skills as you can.